Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and this is Opa's TV Movie Car Challenge, and I am doing the General Mayhem. I'm starting off with this brand new Dodge Charger. As always, if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of all videos. So yeah, here's the custom 68 Charger. The casting I picked uh, mainly because it was just, it had everything I wanted on it. I know, you know, this whole car, this whole build um, was kind of an amalgamation of many different parts. So um, I know I'm going to catch some crap about what I'm using, but in the end, um, I think I had to take some creative liberties here and there. The car went through many stages of its life. Um, from a 440 motor out of a motorhome to a Hellcat motor, different wheels, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, so this is kind of what I have to work with. I took it all apart. Um, very simple to take apart. Um, first thing that's got to go is the rear window because there was not one in the car. And anybody who's ever driven anything similar to this, Chevelle, anything with a kind of sloped back window if the rear window frame is rotted, and you go fast enough with all the windows down, the window will blow out anyways. <laughs> um, the wheels gave me a little bit of a fit. And I, again, this is one of the spots I took some creative liberty. The um, stock car that came out of the package, the wheels were way too thin. I kind of went back and forth. Um, I was going to go with some um, regular steel wheels, but the ones I had were really thin as well. So what I did is I used... Um, I have a Mopar green light kit for wheels and they have fatter tires and that's kind of what I wanted to go with so I used those and put those on the Magnum rims and again it's in one of its many incarnations it, it is sporting some of those rims so um, I'm not too far off the mark after I stripped the car in the citrus strip I'm going to use um, a really worn out wire brush and the wire wheel and strip everything off again this is going to get you know kind of a crappy paint job intentionally for a change and uh, but I want to have a good base to work with so to clean off all the stripper and everything out of it um, the wire wheels work really really good and it gives you a good clean surface to work on and you don't have to worry about paint chipping and so on and so forth if you clean it really really well um, but yeah, step one, obviously, after you strip it's to get everything off. The car uh, does not have door handles. So I'm going to file those off, and then I'm going to drill two little holes, or as little as I possibly can with the tools that I have, um, to at least leave the hole where you would stick your finger in to hit the latch to open the door. Um, most of my older cars, uh, when I first get them, don't have door handles. So uh, this is... Kind of a throwback for me because uh, usually you just stick your hand in and open up the door. Um, so I'm using a pin vise. I don't have, um, I mean, that is the smallest bit that I have. So uh, it may not 100% be a scale, but it's close. The driver's side has a marker light that's missing. So I'm going to drill that out as well. Um, I did find one bit a little bit. Well, the same size, but it actually fit in my chuck for my drill, so it saved me a little bit of time. <clears throat> Excuse me. This overall, I'm so glad that he did, that Opa decided to do this challenge. Um, I had a blast doing this. Uh, I waited to the last minute like everything else in my life, but uh, in the end, it came out really, really well. Cutting off the vent window frame posts. Um, those were not on the original. Again, I'm using a different casting from a different year, all that stuff, so... Um, just the Hot Wheels castings for the chargers, I just didn't like uh, for this project. So um, The car itself obviously has some dings, dents, um, was not perfect. So I'm using a um, deburring, a round deburring tool to kind of go through and the best that I can simulate everything that the car has from the fender dent up by the grill rocker panels, fenders, any place that I could find a picture that had a dent or, a, you know, any any kind of imperfection that was 
deep enough that at this scale I could work with, um, I decided to do that. I did not show it, but I also took the same deburring tool and I ground down the grill area so it got rid of the grill because this doesn't have the stock the general mayhem doesn't have the stock grill if they use they pretty much hung two lights and then put a piece of grate in front of it so it was easy for me to just grind that out of the way now um, and just get it over with um, again you can see i'm kind of hitting the rocker panels um, make sure you guys go to Op i'm not going to list them in the description below i'm going to put opa's uh, YouTube channel, please go to his page for a listing of all the participants in this challenge. And that way, um, you're getting to go to his channel as well and show him some support and make sure um, you click on everybody who's participated because I've seen some of the cars, or at least what people are going to build. Uh, it's pretty killer. If you saw right there, I'm using some tool, is what it's called. It's a um, fabric for the grill. Primer Dakar Gray, flat blacked the chassis and that tool so that it has a black look. The front driver side fender, um, I mixed orange and red to try to come up with the best color I could to be as close as I could to what was on the um, original car. I believe the car, if you look at the video, was originally some sort of an orangey red to begin with because you can see it inside and it looks like it was just primered black and then they added this and added that so on this what i'm trying to do is i'm just going to airbrush the fender the um the front pillars the rear valance some of the rockers and then dust the inside of the car so when you look in you can see some of that red because there's no headliner in this there's no rear shelf to you know so um Again, trying to be as correct as I can with it, with with the scale limitations that I have in my patience level. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna mask off the red fender and I'm gonna paint the car flat black and primer black. I just didn't like the way it looks, so I went with the flat. Um, once the base was done, I'm gonna take some lead belcher, which is a Citadel paint, and use that to paint the exhaust. Any kind of a Anything metal underneath that I think would, would, would work well. The lead belcher is not very chrome looking. It's more of a, um, a dark aluminum. So it has the right look for what I'm looking for. And I'm going to end up washing it anyways. And then I'm going to take some... I'm not even sure what color that is. It's kind of orangey <laughs> from Citadel. And I'm going to use that to paint the bottom of the um, engine block with the oil pan. And make sure I get all that. And again, that's going to get washed out too, but um, try to do as much detail as I can. And as I stated, there's no rear shelf in this, so I'm going to drill out the speaker holes that would have been there, or whether from the factory or cut out. Uh, and it makes a perfect place for you if you were back in the 80s when I grew up. You'd buy your Pioneer Super Tuner radio and stick some Jensen triaxles back there and rock the crap out of some Iron Maiden. But Anyways, I'm going to drill that and paint it red. The car, they didn't have tail lights, so they took some tail lights off of a newer charger and just kind of put them on there. So that's what I was making there. The base, I'm going to take, there's different shades that you can use. A lot of people use Nuln Oil, which I do use. Um, right now, I'm using the Agrath Earth Shade, which has a little bit more of a brownish tint to it. Um, it's a more of a brown wash, so I'm going to hit the, the underneath with that first and then do the interior as well just to kind of grungy it up a little bit and make it make it look as worn as I can. Um, I missed a recording, I'm not sure where, but I put some Typhus Corrosion by Citadel um, on the base and now I'm going to hit and dry brush the riser rust over that. And, as, and I've said it before in my other videos, it looks really orange, but it's not. When you start putting it over a darker color um, it definitely looks like a rust brown especially when it's dry brushed and then to finish it off I'm just going to take some um, silver weathering powder and just kind of quickly brush over the base and just to highlight some of the metal the wheels themselves pretty easy they just slide right through the two holes in the uh, metal chassis and you can just pop them on I'm using I think it's called Warg Flesh. Uh, it's a certain dark shade of green. I'm going to airbrush that on the fender. I didn't show that in the video. 
but you can put the Citadel paints in your airbrush. You just have to, to dilute it with some distilled water, and it comes right out. You just got to watch out for um, dry tip. That's all. Uh, you just got to be quick about it. Car would not be complete without the Fury hood scoop, which I hand fabricated out of styrene. And then I'm going to use some Tamiya putty to fill in the gaps, um, cracks, and crevices that are inherent when you put multiple pieces together. Um, stuff works awesome, dries quick. The car would not be complete without a chrome gas cap. That was the one new piece that they made sure to put on, <laughs> and uh, I'm definitely duplicating that. Then I'm just going to take some, some orange, highlight the, um, the lights, the driving lights underneath, and uh, again, I'm, I'm doing the best I can to be as, as, as accurate as I possibly can. Um, the project took me a long time. It was a lot of, a lot of fun work, but a lot of tedious work because 90% of it is detailing. Um, so here I'm just going to glue those rear um, newer Challenger taillights on. i got to go against my OCD and make them semi-crooked because that's the way they were. They were just kind of hanging there. But uh, again, tedious work with tweezers and I don't know, just, it was a pain in the neck, but it was it, it's worth it in the end because it looks really good. So now I have to paint the hood scoop. The it, It's kind of a weird color. It's kind of like a tannish yellow. So I'm mixing tan and yellow because I'm not very color coordinated to begin with. Um, again, it's Citadel paints, which I primarily use on 90% of my bills. Um, they just have a lot of flexibility. I mix the two colors together, dilute it with some water so I can uh, not get any brush marks when I paint. And that worked out really well. I think the color, I think I nailed the color. It's pretty pretty damn close as with most of the colors here. Um, you know, it might be off a little bit. I'm using some 1 16th aluminum rod. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a very small ring with my knife. And those are going to be my headlights um, to duplicate what they did. And I end up painting the inside of it white. And then I clear coat the whole thing with some matte clear. So I have a, um, when I do the detailing on the body itself, I have something to work with and a uh, nice surface. So you can see I kind of painted the, the, the hood off camera. I didn't want to bore you guys with a lot of, as it is, I was trying to keep this video semi-short, but it still turned into a 17-minute video. So uh, this was the most time-consuming and grueling and tedious and hair pulling out process was putting this damn grill in um, the tool as cool as it is it's difficult to work with but um, in the end it came out really good um, but yeah it's fun stuff now I'm just gonna try to detail everything I possibly can to make it match with weathering um, I'm using that typhus corrosion on all the spots that look like it's got a little bit of surface rust starting to pop through so if I put that on lightly, and then I'll go over it with the Ryza Rust and just kind of make it pop just enough where it looks like it's not totally rusted, but it's starting to come through. I'm using some sandpaper. I used various grits to, to kind of weather the body a little bit because it's not supposed to be a perfect flat black paint job, um, although the camera doesn't show it. But there's the Ryza Rust. I'm going to go through. Hit everything, hit the body over again just to kind of dull the black down as well. So it's kind of got the sanding plus the rise of rust. Um, again, you got to really dry brush that stuff on there. And kind of think of it in layers, just do a little bit. You could always add more. Um, but if you put too much, it's kind of a pain in the neck to, to remove. So here's that Nuln oil I was talking about. So it's more of a black wash. I'm getting all the, all the painted parts, the red and the green, in any place that I did the rust effects. And then I'm going to go over that again with the Agrath Earthshade just to kind of dirty it up a little bit. The windshield I took and masked it off like a windshield wipers were cleaning off a window. And the Xandri dust I just kind of dry brushed on there. It kind of gives the, the windshield a little bit of a grungier, dirtier look like you went through some mud. It's hard to tell on camera unfortunately. Um, I'm going to look into a different lens. Huge thanks to all my Patreon members, Chris Smith, Joey Williams, Christian Stanley, and Stephen Mance, William Robinson, Devil's Details Diecast, Matchbox Garage, Alvarez's Diecast Customs, and Jim Silva. All the ones with the YouTube links, 
are down in the description below. Please go check these guys out. They all do killer work, and I appreciate their support. Uh, now all that's left is assembly and to beat the crap out of this thing, which I, I do try. <laughs> um, snaps together real easy. One screw, piece of cake. Um, this was a fun project. I'm launching it here off my track. Um, I appreciate everybody watching. Please go check out Opa's channel and all the links down in his description for all the videos. And I hope you guys enjoy this. Stick around, watch me do some stuff with it, see some pictures. I'll catch you on the next one.